Let's assume that these hurdles are met and that we start getting widespread adoption of people getting involved in these different use cases for tokenized assets. How is that going to transform our economy when, when we're relying on investments in tokenized assets and, and we've moved away from what we now think as TradFi and, that's, and we have a new TradFi, which is blockchain-based? What, is, what does the future look like in five to 10 years? In 45 seconds. I, look, I'm, I'm just going to go with the obvious, right? I, I, and use the word stable coins. In, in my mind, stable coins are the perfect example of tokenized assets, right? It's the tokenized US dollar for our country. It could be euro, it could be yen. The fact that I can zap something from my phone or from my desktop to someone else anywhere in the world at, without having to send a wire and to someone's point earlier, maybe it was Dennis, you don't know when it's going to hit. You don't know when the account's going to get credited or debited. I can do this faster, cheaper, more expediently, and 24-7. Love that stuff. And it's going to erase a lot of the friction in the financial world today in less than five years. Perfect example, I think I saw reports that uh, if anyone's used Airbnb, right, especially if you're a renter as opposed to a rentee, you can now get paid a lot faster, and even on weekends, by someone like Visa that's using tokenized uh, stable coins. Why? because they can drop the stable coins in your wallet a lot quicker and not have to wait till Monday till the bank opens, right? Beautiful use case for users of Airbnb. Great, Gerald? Yeah, I fully agree uh, with the point about uh, stable coins being um, you know, kind of a core use case that has transformational potential on a going forward basis. Um, I would also say that the uh, tokenization of property rights of different kinds um, it, you know, is, is going to be very powerful in terms of creating efficiencies. Um, and, and I would also say that if you look at the future of money and the future of finance and creating more equitable distributions of outcomes, uh, that's going to be a very positive societal factor of this uh, type of technology as well. Great. Dennis? Yeah, I would point back to the work that we did last year with, with the Monetary Authority of Singapore and Project Guardian around what portfolios of tokenized investments would look like for you know, your retail investor. And what we found is that because it's so much more efficient, you're taking you know, roughly 3,000 steps of rebalancing, collapsing it into a few clicks, because it's so much more efficient, you are able to get this level of hyper-personalization. And because you have cash and assets on the same set of rails, you could potentially eliminate cash drag entirely. Like anybody who runs a portfolio is gonna keep some level of cash. Like you don't necessarily have to do that. And that's an instant benefit to your end investor, plus the ability to potentially include alternative investments and get a better, higher quality por portfolio from that angle as well. Oh, now you stole my answer. I like the hyper personalization. No, I, I, so I agree with that. I, I agree with the stable coins. I think that it's going to be stable coins 2.0 or 3.0 when you have you know more more utility and not just the the creator of the stable coin getting all the yield. So I think that this yield component that's going to change. I think the pre panel yesterday talked about that. Um, and then I think there's also you know so there's, there's going to be new markets with respect to you know, things we talked about before about intraday use of uh, collateral and liquidity liquidity. But there's going to be a lot of stuff that just changes and people don't notice or don't care. And that's what's most, most important is with five, five to 10 years from now, the four of us will not be up here talking about this at all. And that'll be a good thing because it just happened. <laughs>